What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Daily Draft brought to you by Badger State Brewing in beautiful Green Bay, Wisconsin. Just minutes away from Lambeau Field. I am your host and the publisher of Packer Report, Ross Uglum, and very excited because today is a mock draft Monday. Uh, we did get into a little bit of this stuff during the uh, the Braylon Allen show. Um, that was the first like non pre recorded show. You guys notice there will be consecutive days. If you're one of our YouTube folks, you'll notice I'm going wearing the same outfit. It's because you know we'd like to get ahead of stuff. I like to uh, life life comes at you fast. I've got kids. I I had a, a sick kid the day that that's why it sounded different. That's why it looked different. I had a sick kid the day we did Brandon Allen. Um, but you know had a chance to talk and and we'll we'll get into it again because I know if you missed the Braylon episode, I could get that. Um, I know Mock Draft Monday is our highest viewed episode, highest listened to episode. I get that. I very much appreciate that. But Mock Draft Monday is when we, you know, kind of had the agreement that, hey, this is when we're going to talk ball. This is when we're going to talk, you know, an actual topic, not a specific position or a specific player. So I'll get into, you know, kind of some of what was said. Um, definitely just like not, nothing but tremendous amounts of respect for Ted Thompson. Um, but. Brian has done a great job and a better job than Ted of putting himself in a position where he doesn't have to do anything um, in the NFL draft. He's not forced. You know, there have been times, and, and again, like if you listen to the Brilliant Allen episode, this is a lot of repeat stuff, but there are certainly times during Ted Thompson's tenure where it was like, well, we know exactly what they're, they have to do. Like when they took Ha Ha Clinton Dix, and that seemed to be the perfect marriage of need and player at the time. I mean, I was ecstatic. I've never been, uh, it's been a very, very long time since I've been as excited about a first round pick as I was about ha ha. Um, just going back like Quay and Devante were both. Okay. Um, going back to Stokes was, eh. um, even Jair. I was like, well, that's interesting. Um, Lucas Van Ness was kind of, eh, <laughs> you know, not, not that I was disappointed, which was like, okay, well, toolsy pass rush or whatever. Um, yeah, you, you go back for me to that ha ha pick, and that was the first like, man, they should have never had a chance to get ha ha, and it's exactly the player they need at exactly the position they don't have. But that was sort of some of the cornering into, you know, stuff that 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 unfortunately Ted did by just being so against bringing in anybody else that played for a different team other than one you know one of his guys. And, and some of that responsibility helped, and I think it's a reason why they were so consistently competitive for so long. But I think if he would have been a little bit spicier in the way that Brian Gutekunst is, um, they might have had a little bit more, you know, high level success. Maybe one more Super Bowl appearance, maybe one more championship. Who's to say? Um, but once again, you know, Goody has has addressed a need. Um, a couple, you know, uh, they don't have to get a tight end anymore. You know, Deguar is gone, and I'm not saying they had to draft one high, but they don't have to pick one at all now with Tyler Davis returning. I mean, you absolutely can go into the season with Ben Sims, Tucker Craft, Luke Musgrave, and Tyler Davis. Tight end, one, two, three, four. Don't have to do it. Running back, Josh Jacobs in, Aaron Jones out, whatever, but A.J. Dillon back and then Emmanuel Wilson. I don't know that those three make a ton of sense, you know, together, but um, there are a number of smaller, you know, pass catching backs still out there in free agency. If they don't like anything they see in the draft, uh, you can always get, I shouldn't say always, but there are backs in undrafted free agency that work out just fine, especially as a third back. Um, they don't have to draft a back. They don't have to draft a safety anymore. They can. They can, and they've done stuff like that before. They drafted Darnell Savage when they took uh, Adrian Amos, you know, from the from the free agency pool. They drafted Rashawn Gary when they signed the Smith brothers. So they they can and they have, but they didn't have to take those guys, and they don't have to do really anything except the linebacker right now. Cause right now, I mean, they literally have to take a linebacker or two. They have to. <laughs> and, and uh, this is being recorded on, on, I guess, Friday, March 15th. You guys are getting this on a Monday. So I did lie. It's not a mock draft Monday. It's a uh, Andy's having surgery and needs this before Monday, mock draft Monday on a Friday. So, you know, maybe they signed the love of my life, Jerome Baker. Um, you know, maybe, maybe they grabbed one of the two guys I thought were interesting in Zach Cunningham or, or Shaq Leonard. I don't know, but um, as of right now, they like basically need to draft two, I would say, off ball linebackers, and they probably need to do one of them in the top 100 if if they you know have a guy that they like and basically plan on handing the Mike linebacker job to, which is 
sort of what it looks like right now. I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll see, especially moving to a 4-3 defense. But uh, anyway, that is a little bit off the beaten path here on a mock draft Monday. But but once again, like I said, by, by signing Xavier McKinney, you don't have to drive a sa- draft a safety. You no longer have to draft a running back. Um, the Tyler Davis things means you don't have to draft a tight end. And as much as it makes me sad, re-signing Corey Ballantyne and Keyshawn Nixon means they don't have to draft a corner. I would, um, you know, I think you can pick apart their corner group really fast. I've seen like Justice Mosqueda, four corners for three spots. Okay. Well, one of them plays in about 53% of the games over the last three years. He's your best one, Jair Alexander. So he's gone half the time. One of them's a seventh round pick and you can like Carrington Valentine. I, I don't no problem with that. But if you're like, I got to take a tackle that I take the Okay. Why do you got to take a tackle to play over Rasheed Walker instead of a corner to play over Carrington Valentine? What? I, please explain that one to me. Sheed was a better tackle than Valentine was a corner last year. Period. Like that's not debatable. Um, I think the nickel's bad. I think Keyshawn is just a liability at the nickel position. And then Stokes. I mean, it's hard to have a worse game than Stokes had against the Bucks before they shut him down again. So yes, four four corners for three spots, and now Valentine's back. So you have your one, three, one, two, three, four, and five corners back from a year ago. But, I mean, there is a very non-zero chance that Jair gets hurt again. Valentine just isn't that good. Stokes is cooked, and Keyshawn continues to be bad. That's on the table. There are more positive outcomes than that for the cornerback group. I, I admit that. But there's a real possibility that Jair plays 12 games. And Valentine isn't that good as a seventh round pick. And Keyshawn continues to be awful, which he has been. You look at any of the numbers, people are like, oh, he's an average nickel. No, he's not. He isn't. There's a tweet I had up the other day about um, you know, where he ranks. There's like 33 guys that have played at least 200 slot, slot snaps last year. He ranked 26th, 27th, 22nd. Where we're talking about PFF coverage grade, um, completion percentage allowed, first downs allowed. Uh the percentage of forced incompletions where he's making the play to knock the ball away bottom half. And frankly, in a lot of them, like bottom quarter. Okay. And, and I just, I didn't, I didn't need to see any more Keyshawn Nixon play defense. So there's my cornerback rant. But again, you resign Keyshawn, you go get Ballantyne. Don't have to draft a corner should probably, but don't have to. I think you go in there with five top 100 picks, just able to pick, probably four or five of the best players. Just your four or five top guys. Maybe there's, like I said, maybe one has has to be a linebacker. But, man, um, Brian Gutekunst throwing darts the way he has the last two years. If I give that man four top 100 picks with no positional requirements outside of probably don't take a quarterback, I get that they want to draft quarterbacks, but I don't burn a top 100 pick on a quarterback the year after you know, the year that you re-sign your, you know, it's too much Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts for me. I'm, I'm out on that deal. Um, but we could talk about it in round four. We could talk about it with the comp pick at the end of round five. Guy like Michael Pratt, guy like Spencer Rattler, somebody with some talent, okay. Um, but, but Goody, man, with four or five picks where he doesn't have a requirement, he doesn't have a thing he has to do, that's exciting stuff if you're a Packers fan. Because he has been cooking with gas for two years. And um, this is a good young talent, talented team with a good young quarterback that has a chance to do some things. Okay, let's get, if I can do this real quick, let's get into Mock Draft Monday. As always, you know, we try to do something a little bit different, right? Try to do something, um, you know, that's that's not quite the exact same as, as what we do week in and, and week out. And so we'll use NFL Draft Buzz. Um, as our, as our mock, we'll go to round five, try and speed this bad boy up. The randomness is fine at two, I guess. Um, let's just not do the trades. Let's just not do trades this time. New SIM is new enough. That'll, that'll quicken things if you will. Um, so the trade value chart doesn't matter because we're not doing trades for this one. So this is a standard. Five round, seven pick Packers mock using this kind of cool looking uh, NFL draft sim. And let me just pop up here for the guys that can't see. 
We remember you. We love you. I understand you have bills to pay, NFLDraftBuzz.com, but we are taking your ads down right now. All right, zoomed in for the folks of Bad Eyes. We appreciate you. We love you. Entering the draft. Starting the draft. Sorry if this is a little slow. It's just not something that I have done before, which is fine. I am pulling up my 3.0 draft board that I just realized. I, it, I Some of the transposition stuff sometimes just gets me. I miss the Isaiah Adams kid. He's literally not on my board now. He's like 128th for me, but I missed him on the transposition. So the, the 3.0 is not a perfect thing, I would say. Oh, my goodness me. Okay. Uh, this is easy. Quinion Mitchell. So... And I get it, right? Um, I, I, on the Quinion thing, I'm just going to address it because I apparently have to address every time. But like, Quinion or no would be there? Maybe, probably. Okay. Brian Bulaga wasn't supposed to be there, right? Ha ha! Clinton Dix was not supposed to be there. It happens all the time. It happens all the time, especially if four quarterbacks are going to go in the top six. Which they probably are. Stuff happens. Guys that aren't supposed. We, Jake Morley and I did this the other day. These guys have him ranked as the number 20th overall prospect. It's not that crazy. I think he's 14 for me. Number 20 overall guy being available at 25 is not that wild. So I don't want to hear it in the comments. We're just going to take Quinion Mitchell because he is the player that has been made available to us. Start him inside, start him outside. I don't care. I'm still taking the corner. Quinion Mitchell. I looked at Fuaga for a second. Okay. Fuaga, player 21 for me. Quinion, player 14. This is easy. Quinion Mitchell. It's, a, it's an attractive sim. I do like the thing on the right where because there are very few mocks where it's just or mock simulators where it's super easy for me. Oh, this is again super easy. Done over with. Uh Jordan Morgan. This would be a, this is a home run, by the way, at this point. Uh Anyway, uh, where, where you're on the right-hand side here, being able to see who you've already taken. It's not because I'm an idiot. Like, I, I can figure it out most of the times. But I'll get in, I've gotten into spots where, like, defensive tackle, and I've ta taken um, Chris Jenkins early. And then one of the nose tackles, like Sweater McKinley Jackson, will be there, or Mason Smith. And I'll go, oh, that's interesting. But I'm not going to do that. And I'll have to go back. And so th the fact that I can sort of see my draft here, um, I like quite a bit. All right, Peyton Wilson, um, really looking at that pretty hard. It looks, I would guess, just scooting through here. Edge Cooper's gone. That's totally fine. Um, just looking at the board here, like TJ Tampa is actually a guy I have ranked ahead of Peyton Wilson, to be honest. Um, but Green Bay's got a pretty full corner room. I didn't have any problem releasing Corey Ballantyne. But they're not going to release Keyshawn Nixon making that kind of money. So, and I don't think they're going to release Carrington Valentine. They're not going to release Stokes, I don't think. They're definitely not releasing Ja. So, I think two of the top 58 picks being corner, I don't know that I would do that. I don't know that that makes a ton of sense. But working through the rest of, of this, like I have a pretty high grade on Cooper BB, but we just took Jordan Morgan. Um, I have a high grade on, on Xavier worthy, but he's probably too light to be a Packer. And, and right now I just, I really like, frankly, adding Peyton Wilson, who I have, um, as a top 50 player and I have as my top linebacker. And as I just talked about at the beginning of the show, they don't have one. They don't. So as of right now, this is a, that's a big time pick and, and some good patience by, by, you know, us, me, whatever, being the Packer uh, GM and, and just trusting that one of Colson Cooper or Peyton Wilson would be there at 58. One was, is the second round necessarily where I want to burn an off ball linebacker pick? Maybe not, probably not. But at this point, kind of had to end up doing, you know, the quote unquote, the right thing. Okay. Um, Looking at the available players here, I, I don't mind Blake Corum. Um, I think you you, you re-sign AJ Dillon. You spend what you spend on on uh, Josh Jacobs. Maybe that's not the smartest thing in the world. I don't mind Trey Benson there either. 
think I know who the pick's going to be, though. And he just showed up on the screen. Jonah Ellis, guys, is a very good football player. Um, my only question is I don't think we have, like, any athletic testing for him. And that doesn't, I guess, necessarily matter a ton other than, you know, I'd like to probably be realistic in what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, and he's so small, so small and didn't do anything else. You know what? We'll skip him for just right now. We'll skip him for just right now. And here's where we get our safety in Cole Bishop, who I actually probably have ranked overall higher than Jonah Ellis. We get our safety in Cole Bishop to pair with uh, Xavier McKinney, and we're very happy with that. I, I wanted to look at Jonah Ellis. Boy, and now it's almost, I don't know, man. Doorless is just so big and, and such a defensive tackle for probably what they want to do now. Really, really looking at Jonah Ellis here again, though. Really, really looking at Jonah Ellis um, to play that Kingsley and Igbari role, to be in the in the room, right, as a part of things when, um, you know, Preston Smith is probably released next offseason. As, as at least something that we need to consider, we uh, we being the Green Bay Packers. And actually, I'm gonna roll with uh, I'm gonna roll with Hofta. This is a tough one because I'm kind of staring at some of these wide receivers too. Um, specifically, Johnny Wilson. You know what? I'm just gonna take Johnny Wilson. It's done. There's my bonus pick. Kids, my bonus pick is Johnny Wilson. Play him at flex tight end. Have him dig out guys in the run game. This is this is Alan Lazard. If Alan Lazard was a 98th percentile athlete, you just got him at 90. Now we're probably looking at the running back position here in round four. Probably looking at the running back position. We're probably looking to um, running back edge if we like an edge. We're going to have to deal with edge a different way. Nope. Golly, that's tough because I really like Drew Phillips. This is the most Packers pick there ever was. I'm going to take Rosengarten as my my other. He's a Packer. I, I just look at his athleticism profile, where he went to school. I got my two Pac-12 offensive linemen here. I'm cooking with gas. David Bakhtiari, Sean Ryan, Jordan Morgan, Roger Rosengarten. I'm going to be really jazzed if uh, Kalen King or Jerry and Jones are available here as a nickel this late. Two guys I would actually play there. All right, he's gone. So Vaki is, well, we're not going to take a, a, another safety, another, another safety. Um, we've already done that. What do we got here at the running back spot that we can do? Anybody that I really like? Not a ton. Not a ton. McCaffrey's so interesting just because, I mean, he's a tier one fit for those guys, for those guys being Green Bay. He is like just exactly what they do, exactly what they want at that spot just kind of we're at the last pick I think that that Green Bay has at 169 and I'm just sort of whipping through trying to see if there's anybody that apparently you know I would have way higher than you know whoever's doing the rankings here at uh NFL draft buzz I like the simulator though I do um, I've enjoyed using it. It's simple. I like the the graphics are attractive. I like being able to see what I've done on the right hand side. I like to be able to see kind of what has gone on 
there on the left. Um, it's been good. I like it. All right, my guy, uh, Ben Sinnott, not available at the tight end position. I do like the Tip Ryman kid. Uh, let's see if any of the QBs I like are available. They are not. Okay. Joe Milton's kind of interesting. Still haven't done anything at running back. Um, Fidal is really interesting and might actually end up being the pick. Probably not going to do that. Probably not going to do that. Defensive line. Logan Lee is a freak athlete from Iowa. That might be enough of just a flyer at this pick. Um, defensive back. If any of these defensive backs are guys that I would play inside, if any of my you know, big time, um, big time nickel guys are are still available. Nobody that I see. This is killing everybody. I'm 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 slow. Let's just go. Uh, let's go with Miles Cole. He's a super freak. Get him in the room. Um, go look at his athleticism. This is an athleticism play, a hundred percent at a position of need. They they need another edge. Um, this is a hundred percent a roll of the dice and we're very much counting on someone in green Bay to coach him up because Cole was not that productive. Um, all right. Well, anyway, uh, Quinion Mitchell, Jordan Morgan, Peyton Wilson, Cole Bishop, Johnny Wilson, Roger, Roger Rosengarten and miles Cole. What did I just say? You don't have to draft a running back. And I didn't. And, um, you don't, you know, I, I, I think, the the Mitchell pick is a, is a need situation. Um, Cole Bishop probably starts. Jordan Morgan and Roger Rosengarten are very much the types of guys that they'll add to this offensive line. Peyton Wilson starts probably at Mike right away. And then, you know, the real lottery tickets are Johnny Wilson and Miles Cole, both just super freak athletes. And um, I wouldn't say luxuries because I, Wilson is probably a luxury. But Cole isn't. I mean, that edge four thing is real. They need to they need to do something there. And uh, you know, there's no proof that that Preston Smith is going to be on the team on 2025. And Lord knows what you're getting from Enigbari this year. So there's your your draft. I really like the way this one turned out. Um, Mitchell, Morgan, Wilson, Cole Bishop, Johnny Wilson, Roger Rosengarten, and Miles Cole. I I think this is a good good draft. I'd be very very pleased with this. Any draft with Quinion and Mitch, I think you'd be thrilled with, but any of those, like the Jordan Morgan, Fatanu, Graham Barton, any of those three guys that you're able to snag at 41, instead of having to do it at 25, I think you'd be really thrilled with. Okay. Uh, Doug Farrar, as always doing our very best over at the touchdown wire, doing our very best to not know what's going on. I don't, these are live reactions. This is a two round post free agency mock. So wow. Vikings go up for Bo Nix. Okay. Cooper DeGene gone. Fatanu gone. Fuaga gone. I wonder if that's six quarterbacks. You'd think it was, right? Could be. I mean, could be. Well, let's go look. Caleb, Jaden Daniels, Drake, that's three. Bo is four. McCarthy, five. Maybe it's just five. Okay. Quinion gone. Wiggins gone. Law two. I'd be trading up to 19. Anyway, JPJ gone. Johnny Newton gone. Kool-Aid gone. BTJ gone. AD Mitchell gone. Oh, Jared Verse. That'll fix you right up. That edge four. <laughs> Probably edge two, to be honest with you. Love this. Love this start. Jared Verse at 25. But another guy where, you know, if I did Jared Verse, he'll never be there at 25. Well, it just shook out that way. It's not crazy. It just shook out that way. Newbin gone. Peyton Wilson gone. Graham Barton gone. TJ Tampa gone. Oh, Sainra still. Farrar, um, I will say not 
and, and look, he's a national writer, so that's fine. Um, Verse had a three cone that I don't know if it disqualifies him from being a Packer, but they're not going to love it. Sainer is still just is the guy like they won't draft. I mean, I, I hope to be very wrong. I hope to be very wrong, but, um, there's some athletic stuff here early in Ferrars mock where they're probably not in on Sainer still at all, but man, you get past 41 and the two picks are verse and Sainer still, I'm going to be a problem. I'm going to be a problem. That is for sure. And finally, Chris Jenkins, whew, this would be a sweet draft. And I know there are people out there that, uh, you know, a lot about football at a really, really smart Packers folks that would just scoff at what Doug has done here because there's not an offensive lineman. My take on it is the Green Bay Packers are better than any team in football at drafting mid round to late round offensive linemen. And they have five starters. Doesn't mean they won't do it. Doesn't mean they shouldn't. Doesn't mean this isn't even necessarily that smart. But if you give me Chris Jenkins, Mikey Sainer still, and Jared Verse, pick one in round three, pick round in round five, and pick round in round seven, and grab an undrafted one. Those can be your four offensive line additions. I don't care. Because that's going to make a massive impact on your defense. You just added your second best defensive lineman on the team in Chris Jenkins. You completely fixed the gaping hole at nickel corner with Mikey Sainer still. And Jared Verse is a top 12 player, I think, in this class for me, if not higher. He is that dang good, and to get him at 25 would be awesome. All right, folks, I hope you have enjoyed Mock Draft Monday. I have enjoyed bringing it to you. How can you help us out? Give us, give me a follow at, at Ross Uglum and us a follow at, at Packer Report 66 on X, formerly known as Twitter. By the draft guide, folks, um, it's, it's my pinned tweet. It's all over. Uh, if you go to Packer Report, you can find it. It's stuck. It's the third story. It'll be that way till April 8th when the guide comes out. Uh, use promo code daily for 10% off. The guy is going to be awesome guys. And um, like I said before, again, if you missed the Braylon Allen show uh, when that show was recorded or, you know, this day on, on Friday, March 15th, you guys are getting this on Monday. I just want to say, thank you. Um, we have reached our sales for last year's guide here on March 15th. And we sold that guide up into the day of the draft and into the draft. And on March 15th, um, we have reached last year's number. We may do two or three times, as many guides as we did last year. I want to thank all of you for buying it. And I want to thank Andy for giving me this platform to kind of promote it. And uh, we really, really, really hope you guys love it. And you will, because a lot of heart and soul went into that. And a lot of really, really smart football people um, helped put it together. So um, that's it for me for today. Do everything you're supposed to do here on uh, the Packaday podcast, like subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications so that you get every single bit of Packers content that you require on a daily basis. Have a great rest of your Monday, guys, and go Pack Go.